All right, welcome back to another video. This one is going to be a few towing tips, all right? Now, I'm just about to hook up the van. I'll start there. Let me jump in the car and I'll tell you a bit more. All right, swing over here. Can you see me? Here we go. All right, first tip to towing, start the car. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. All right, um, now I, before I start, I just want to let everyone know this isn't a uh, instructional or an in you know what I mean, a, uh, a towing course, all right? This is just stuff that we've learned along the way and a little video to help you out, okay? Um, so I suppose this is, in an essence, a bit of a disclaimer because towing um, caravans and campers and trailers, everyone's different, right? Everyone's got a different tow vehicle, everyone's different caravan, everyone's different weights, um, and everyone's at a different experience level, yeah? So for me, um, number one tip, get yourself a reversing camera. At the moment, I am hooking up the caravan. Having a reverse camera has saved me a divorce about 57,000 times, I reckon. Um, yeah, because I can pretty confidently say that I've probably hooked my caravan up more than any other 37-year-old bloke in Australia. I can pretty confidently say that. Um, so anyway, nice and easy. Make sure, oi, big hot tip, while you're backing up, I always make the kids either sit down sit inside sit in the car okay not run around play a game because your draw bar and your toe ball to your draw bar and your toe ball are a pinch point a crush zone if you get anyone in between there as you're hooking up you can it's potentially fatal mate okay so you don't want anyone in there you don't want anyone mucking around make sure someone's watching the kids that's why a reverse camera is good as well because you know what's going on especially with little kids and then um as you back up you get under the toe ball you learn to know when your hitch pin's directly under it. Then you stop, put her in park, and put your hand brake on. That's my first tip. Hope you enjoyed that one. <laughs> Righto, now second tip is, make sure you've got a little order for the way you hook up the van, okay? So that way, you're not gonna forget anything. You're not gonna drive off and leave your plug unattached or your chains unattached, or this is my big one. This one here is your safety, your brake safety, or your breakaway controller. I always seem to forget that one, but when I do my final walk around, which I show you, I always pick it up. So anyway, my order is hitch on. I put the cap on. Now these DO35s, DO45s from Cruise Master are really good because they have a dust cap and they're molded and they will only go on if you've correctly fitted your hitch. So it's a good sort of secondary safety device. Not um, normal 50 mil ball couplings don't have those. Just make sure you can actually lift the little pin over the latch, you know, because um, then you know it's sort of fully secure. Um, but just make sure you know how your hitch works. That's a good tip. So I start with the hitch, right? Next, I do my safety chains just because they're at the bottom here. Now you always cross them, right? So that means your left chain goes to your right point on your car and your right chain goes to the left. Now I've been asked, why do you do that? It's because if this does ever fail or jump off, it creates a cradle. Swing under here, really. Jacko's on the camera. See that? Creates a bit of a cradle, so it will actually catch your hitch when it comes off. It's not gonna drop through to the ground. Sweet. So I'll hook these up, one after the other, and then I'll move on. Next step is my Anderson plug and my 12 volt socket. Now, a lot of vans will be different depending on your setup. This one here does all my charging for my battery. This one here does all my lights and my brake controller, right? But sometimes a lot of caravans will just have one of these or a 12 pin plug, or you might have a bigger one, whatever. But um, these come next. Make sure you plug them in and they're secure because the last thing you want to do is drag these down the road. It only takes 100 meters or so and they will be chewed to bits and you won't be able to use them. So there we go, that's that's done. And then this one, this is a little fellow I generally forget, but I've, I won't this time, I'll hook it on here. And we're happy days. These are handy to have the little coiled up one. You can get a straight one, but they seem to hang down and get in the way. So make sure you try and get a coiled one. They're pretty handy. This is a brake safe brand. So I know there's a few other brands out there, but you can buy these, no dramas. All right, next one, handbrake off. That always helps, eh? And then jockey wheel. So swing out here a bit, Rue. Move back, here we go. We're gonna take this off. The same thing as your cables, if you leave this attached and drag that down the road, um, it's not like a rubber tire in your car that will just get destroyed and it's not going to last very long. So we'll swing this in here and then you need somewhere for it to go. Mine lives in here. If you duck around the corner, Rue, and poke the camera in, 
my jockey wheel lives in there. There we go. Out of the way, easy access, and we're good to go. All right, swing me this. Thanks, Rue. Say, so, cheers, bud. Cheers. <laughs> There's Bill. He's always a good helper, mucking around up there. All right, and then we do a bit of a walk around. So I always, when I stop, I use some wheel chocks. So I'll grab these fellas out once I have actually hooked the van up. Have somewhere for them to go too. Mine live in here. It's always good to have a little spot for everything. That way you know where it is and you'll use it every time. And if it's easy to access, you'll use it more and you'll be safer on the road. There you go. All right, then we do a walk around. That's my final thing. I wander around, I check underneath, I make sure all my legs are up. I get the kids to help too, don't I? <laughs> Not that I trust their judgment. I actually go around and check after them as well. But I do a full walk around, windows are shut, roof hatches are shut, awnings down, and all that sort of stuff, and then do a final walk around here and go, yep, chains, hitch, handbrake, cables, happy days. Yeah, let's jump in the car, Miss O, and get rolling. See the clouds and let them be. Keep every story of your day. So I get in the car, right? First thing I do is check my brake controller. Big tip, if you've got a caravan and you're heavy, make sure you've got an electronic brake controller in your car. You do need one by law when you get over a certain weight, um, but make sure you get a good one, right? So the best one I've found is these guys. They're Red Arc Toe Pro Elite, and you've got a nice little dial on here that fits in your one of your little sockets in your car, and you can adjust how much braking effort you need via that little dial, and you can always also press it as a manual braking, like if you're coming down the a range and you want to give your car's brakes a rest or something you can sort of dial that in and slow the van up but when I get in the car I jump my foot on the brake see this it changes color so it goes from green to red so that tells me that my connection through the trailer plug is good to the brakes now before we get on the road I always do a bit of a tester with it press the manual button and you feel the brakes pull up that way you know they're gonna work when you stand on them if you need them Right, so our next knowledge nugget is reversing, okay? Now this is also going to make your life easier and probably save your divorce. Uh, get the missus out the back with another two-way. Ready? I'll get her on here. Let's do this. Copy Big Dog Roberta. Copy Big Dog Roberta. Copy, copy. Copy, copy. <laughs> All right, um, and she stands behind the van as I come backwards. Right, I'll come back. Just let me know when to stop, eh? Righto. Keep coming. Whoa, well, what's up? <laughs> Thanks for the warning. Thanks, dear. You bloody good at that. Don't you know it? <laughs> Modest too. Hello. That's our reversing tip. All right. While we're on the subject of UHFs, um, they are bloody handy for towing and for safety because you get to monitor other road users and the traffic. So. Uh, we've got an Oricom dual channel one, it's a DTX 4200, but channel 40, if you didn't know, is the main road user's channel, so that's where you'll get all your truckies and sort of updates and roadworks and that sort of stuff. So they're handy to have and when you travel, and especially if you're trying to overtake people, you can say, copy um, the road train, normally they've got a number on the back of them or a truckie, uh, and they can let you know when it's safe to pass. We'll talk about overtaking again soon, because we don't do it, but I will let you know a few little tips to think about. But there you go. Make sure you got a good UHF for your travels. So we're hooked up, we've done our walk around, we're all good, we've just hit the road. First thing I do as I'm driving out of a campground is check my brakes. So obviously you can stand on them, but if you're doing a low speed, you're probably not gonna really know if your brakes are working or not on the van. So what you do is grab it and you can press the manual button and you feel your brakes pull up, you can adjust it and you get them to where you want them to be. So for me, I like mine around two and a half, three, but like I said, it's going to depend on your braking system in your van, whether you've got drum brakes, disc brakes, the weight of them, um, all that sort of stuff. So just find your happy spot for your own braking system and make sure you check it before you hit the road. It's sweet to go. Ready to go, dear? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, so we're out on the highway. Next towing tip. What speed do we travel at? 
and what should you travel at? Well, in my opinion, and you've got to remember this, all this video is just my experience and info along the way. I never go over 100 towing. I just think that's silly. There's a lot more chance of you having an accident, getting a sway up, doing something bad. It takes longer to stop, all that stuff, if you go over 100 k's an hour towing a caravan, okay? That's just my opinion. So um, that's one of our big safety tips. Don't do it. Now, obviously, give yourself some more room, okay? between you and the car in front of you, you are an extra few ton heavier. So it is gonna take you longer to stop. So make sure you preempt that, you scan ahead, you slow down a bit, you give yourself a bit more distance between you and the car in front of you. Um, keep as far left as possible, that's one of my big things. I always sit probably a few inches off the white line on the left hand side. I find it um, stops a bit of that air drag when trucks come past, it stops, you feel a bit safer being this way and I think just from my point of view, from people coming the other way, I feel a lot better when they're sitting as far left as they can as well. So you're not trying to hug the side and you're not, you don't get off on the shoulder and you don't drop your wheels or your car into the dirt, which gets a sway up. Now, what do we do not to get a sway up, not to be dangerous on the road? Well, those few things, keep your speed down, keep your distance, stay alert, don't drive for too many hours. You start to daydream, you start to think about different stuff make sure you're concentrating the whole time, okay? Um, be on the radio, know who's in front of you, know who's behind you, have a good set of towing mirrors so you can actually see what's behind you, you're not t holding anyone up. And um, our biggest one, I think, the most dangerous thing you can do when towing a caravan is try and overtake someone on the highway above 90 to 100 k's an hour, okay? It just, I don't know, you've got to come out of your lane got to go past and generally get over a hundred then you've got to swing back in okay um, all those things create hazards they create dangers of your van getting the sway up you're speeding um, yeah I just just don't do it what do we do if we're stuck behind someone for a while we pull up we have a cup of coffee we make a sandwich and then we might catch them in another hour or so who cares we're not in a hurry or wait for an overtaking lane like we're just about to hit now so obviously there is times where we do overtake mainly in WA on those long stretches of road where there's lots of um, sort of road trains hauling iron ore uh, and they sit on about 90. So you get on the radio, you call up their number on the back of their trailer, say copy old mate, let us know when it's safe to come round you. They say no dramas, um, I'll slow down. So generally they'll let you know, you pull out, they'll back off to like 80, you can zip round them doing 95 to 100, you pull back in nice and safe. There you go. Make sure you just don't be in a hurry. It's so damn dangerous. So the brakes on your car and caravan, make sure they're up for the job. Now we've done the upgrade with the Bendix on the Cruiser. We did it on the Mazda as well. They're a great help when you're doing lots of heavy brake applications. Um, and stopping that brake fade, it gives you a lot more confidence when you're towing a big load. So you can check that out. We've also done a video on that if you want to check it out up here as well, on the install on the Cruiser. But make sure you, um, you get some advice, you know what I mean? If you're not sure on what you need to be able to stop properly and be safe on the road, make sure you go and actually see one of the experts. Like I know Cruise Master have a towing performance center and a lot of the caravan centers, when you pick up a caravan, they should set you up properly. So make sure you know all that info as well. All right, that's enough of the stuff in the car. We're in the caravan now and I'll talk a bit about what we do in here to make it safe for towing. So biggest thing is probably where do you load your gear, okay? So we put all, all our heavy stuff as low as we can to put that in an easy to understand term. Things like your canned food, baked beans, pasta sauces, potatoes, flowers, all the heavy stuff, chuck it down as low as you can in the cupboards down there, okay? You've got plenty of storage under your seats, in your cupboards, under your bed. Use that for your heavy stuff. Um, battery systems, in our van, it's all under the seats. Now you know why? It's because it's directly over the axles. So the more weight you can put directly over the axles, the better it's gonna be dispersed, okay? And the easier and the more stable your van is gonna to tow. Sweet? All right, same as water tanks. I'll give you a, a bit of a footage underneath our van now. I'll put some GoPro footage in there. We got two big water tanks in front of the axle, two behind. You don't have them way up the front, you don't have them way up the back. You try and keep everything, everything over the axles. And a good caravan manufacturer will do that for you. They will have all these components placed where they should be for the correct weight distribution. All right, now I'm gonna sit down. Last thing I wanna cover um, is towing courses, right? So obviously, if you're not confident 
and you don't know what you're doing, the best thing you can do is go and get someone to teach you. Now I just sat down, punched into Google towing courses in Queensland. There's like four of them showed up straight away. So they're ones you can go for one day, two day, three days, whatever your sort of experience level is, you can negotiate with them and talk about what you need to learn. And then you can walk out of there a lot more confident and a lot safer and you'll be able to get out on your own and tow your van knowing that you're gonna be sweet to do it, you know, confident in your own ability, which I think is the biggest part of being safe, is being confident in what you're doing. Now, Alrighty, chuck me the camera here. My lovely wife is filming this, but I just wanna give you a hot tip. This is the last hot tip of the vid, right? And I think it's probably the most important. Now, the best thing you can do to be the safest on your on the road that you actually can be is don't let the missus drive. Oh right? my God, I'm actually not too bad. <laughs> okay, okay, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you've got some good info out of that, guys. Hit me up in the comments um, if you've got any questions, and we'll catch you in the next step. Bye, dear. Oh, yeah. Won't be driving, will you? No, <laughs> oh, yeah. not. Oh, yeah.